Many of my students have started watching the amazing television programme Downton Abbey. Although it has finished, there was the film. Did you all see it? Many people actually saw the film without watching the series. And so what has happened now is, people have started to watch the series of Downton Abbey from the very beginning. I've re-watched the first episode of the first season and I've written down some words and vocabulary which maybe you don't know. In this video I'm going to explain some of them. Okay, there are a lot. Each programme is one hour. And so I've just got a small selection of some things that maybe you came across and didn't understand what they were talking about. So the first one is an expression. Will wonders never cease? This expression we use when we are surprised that something has happened. You passed your proficiency exam. Will wonders never cease? Give it a proper going over. To give something a going over means to examine carefully. Sometimes we also use it in England to say clean something very, 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 very well, thoroughly. Give it a proper going over. A proper means real. So it means give it a real good going over. And they're off. No rest for the wicked. And they're off means they've started. We use this when we're talking about horse racing. At the beginning when the horses come out of the gate, we say and they're off. And so we use this also when people have started to do something. No rest for the wicked means even though we're tired, we still have to work. Give us a hand, will ya? Now, in many parts of England, we use us when we mean me. Give us a hand means please help me. To dish up. To dish up means to put food on plates. Very simple. In fact, maybe it's too simple. Now, if something is muffled, it means it's very quiet and difficult to hear. If somebody is talking in the next room and you can't hear it very well, you would say their voices are muffled. Now, Daisy in Downton Abbey is always flattering somebody, the little vixen. But what does to flatter mean? To flatter means to give somebody praise or compliments in order to make them feel better about themselves, feel more attractive. Or more important, if you are fond of something or somebody, it means you like them very much. I'm fond of chocolate. In this episode, there is the expression, a nastier woman never drew breath. To draw breath basically means to breathe. So, a nastier woman never existed, was never alive. Now, the verb to pocket something means to put something in your pocket. Very simple. But you also use it in a dishonest way. If you pocket something, you take something dishonestly. For example, your mother gives you £20 to go to the shop and you pocket the change. Lock, stock and barrel. If you say lock, stock and barrel, you mean everything is included. Oh, she's smitten with him. She's in love with him. She really likes him. Get a move on. Move faster. For heaven's sake. This we use when we're surprised or annoyed. Or both, surprised and annoyed. For heaven's sake. Can you run down to the shop for me? To run down to somewhere means can you go quickly? So, can you run down to the shop? and get me some milk. You don't actually need to run, just go. But try and be quick about it. Now in this episode, somebody, I don't remember who, says, how's Bates working out? This doesn't mean in the gym. Is he lifting weights, doing his squats like he's supposed to? It doesn't mean that. So what does it mean? This expression is basically asking, how are things going with Bates? Is he doing his job correctly? Is he good at his job? And is everything going okay? And to plan, is there anything wrong? Is he a good worker, a good member of the team? To settle in. This is when you get used to a new place, for example, a new home. Are you settling in? Are you getting comfortable? Is everything okay for you? Do you like it? Are you settling in? We have a spot of bother. A spot of bother is a little bit of trouble, a little problem. Pardon me for living. This I think you can probably work out for yourself. Pardon me for living means I'm sorry I'm alive. I'd have taken him like a shot. Like a shot in this sentence doesn't mean with a gun. It means instantly, immediately, like a shot. What is the looking glass? The looking glass is a very elaborate way of saying the mirror. I didn't sleep a wink. What is a wink? A wink is this. I can only do it to one side. This one's difficult. I didn't sleep a wink means I didn't sleep even a second. I had no sleep at all. 
Now, if somebody fills your shoes, they replace you. Who's going to fill my shoes when I'm not here one day? Any offers? You may have seen the series on Netflix, Penny Dreadful. But what is a Penny Dreadful? In this episode, they actually talk about Penny Dreadfuls. They were books that used to cost one penny and they were horror or mystery or crime. For example, Frankenstein or Dorian Gray, things like this. The versions that cost one penny. Let's not gild the lily. To gild the lily means to make the lily more sparkling, more beautiful. And so you use this when you're saying, don't make things look better than they are. When you have something that's terrible, admit that it's terrible. Don't say that it's better than it is. Don't make it shine when it can't shine. Like in English, we have another expression, you can't make shit shine. Don't try that at home. I used to see him at the odd thing. At the odd thing means not odd numbers and even numbers. Odd also means strange, but in this case, odd means random. I used to see him at the odd thing means I used to see him at some events. Not all of them, just some of them. Every now and again. In the programme, they say he can lump it. The full expression is he can like it or lump it, but now we shorten it to he can lump it. But what does it mean? It means he can accept it. It's not changing. Accept it. There's nothing to do about it. Deal with it. So he can lump it means he can deal with it. There's nothing he can do about it. And the last one, some things come up. This means an unexpected event has happened. Maybe you have to go on a work trip that you didn't know about. A work trip has come up. Some things come up. So you can say, I'm sorry, I can't come to your wedding. Some things come up. You're not specifying what it is, but you're just saying something. Maybe you just don't want to go. So now when you watch the first episode of Downton, listen out for these that we've just talked about.